Back before there were land animals, we know that most life on Earth lived in the seas. Fish may have evolved from corals, which, like most things, probably came from microorganisms. In the very beginning, life probably started with single-celled organisms like bacteria. Unfortunately, most early life forms are too small to be preserved in the fossil record. And too old, there are only really a few places on the planet with rocks ancient enough to carry that kind of fossil evidence. As a result, some of the earliest traces of life we have detected on our planet are so faint that the fossil evidence that remains only reveals the movements of these microscopic organisms. Rare, ancient rocks. Life is believed to date back several billion years at least, and in that time, the geological cycle of our planet has changed a lot, even for rocks. Rocks and the fossils they carry are often buried in sediment. Over time, tectonic movement pushes these rocks back up to the surface, where tides, winds, and other processes erode them away. As a result, most of the fossils that were once preserved of the earliest life would have disappeared due to erosion over time. The older the rock is, the greater the chance the fossil no longer exists, Schopf says. Furthermore, geological cycles often pressure cook rocks, wiping out the fossils preserved inside in the process. There are only a few places on Earth where rocks older than 3.5 billion years can be found that still carry fossil evidence. Parts of Western Australia, Greenland and South Africa have ancient rocks like these, exposed. Australian Chert. Schopf and his colleagues found worm-like patterns preserved in the apex chert, a rock formation in Australia dating back to about 3.465 billion years ago. They first discovered these supposed organisms in 1993, but the idea that these patterns represented ancient life was controversial. In 2018, Schopf published a follow-up study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that used secondary ion mass spectroscopy technology to reveal the ratio of carbon-12 and carbon-13 isotopes. This ratio revealed that the shapes preserved in the chert were characteristic of biological matter. During this time, the planet did not yet have oxygen, Schopf says. Ancient iron doesn't start to show traces of rust, a telltale sign of oxygen in the atmosphere, until about 3 billion years ago. It becomes more abundant about 2.8 billion years ago and common roughly 2.3 billion to 2.5 billion years ago. As a result, microorganisms older than 3 billion years may have used simplified photosynthesis that produced methane rather than oxygen. Stromatolites. Still, the microorganisms Schopf discovered in the chert in Western Australia may not be the oldest fossil evidence of life on the planet. That honor goes to stromatolites, which are sometimes mushroom-looking formations. Some of these may date back hundreds of millions of years earlier than the apex chert fossils Schopf discovered. Stromatolites aren't exactly fossilized remains of ancient life forms themselves. Researchers believe that cyanobacteria often erroneously called blue-green algae, it's not actually algae, would have acted like the organisms do today, spreading across the surface of water to absorb sunlight. Researchers believe the strange shapes of stromatolites were formed by cyanobacteria moving above the surface of the sediment. Sediment would sometimes fall on top of these cyanobacteria mats, which would then push up above the sediment. As these processes repeated over and over again, it formed these strange hummocks or mushroom-like shapes that remain on the landscape today in places like Shark Bay in Australia. Some researchers believe stromatolites dating back to 3.7 billion years ago discovered in Greenland represent traces of life, though this research is disputed by others who believe that geological processes may have caused these strange shapes to emerge in this case. Due to its very nature, most of the fossils that remain of ancient life today are likely indirect, or traces of movement that act similar to ancient footprints. The trouble is we don't really know what the foot looked like in the first place. Japanese researchers recently published a study in Nature stating that rocks in Labrador, Canada contain microfossils dating back 3.95 billion years ago, though these claims are also disputed by researchers, stating that there is no way to be certain. Even Schopf is skeptical about some of these supposed ancient traces of life, which he believes may be the results of ripple marks made by tides or the wind. But in Greenland, climate change is causing the glacial ice cover over many ancient rocks to recede. He says that the exposure of more ancient rocks may yet reveal more evidence of ancient life. Tiny filaments and tubes formed by bacteria that lived on iron were found encased in quartz layers in the Nouveau-Jituk Supercrustal Belt, NSB, Quebec, Canada. 
The NSB contains some of the oldest sedimentary rocks known on Earth which likely formed part of an iron-rich deep-sea hydrothermal vent system that provided a habitat for Earth's first life forms between 3,770 and 4,300 million years ago. Our discovery supports the idea that life emerged from hot, seafloor vents shortly after planet Earth formed. This speedy appearance of life on Earth fits with other evidence of recently discovered 3,700 million year old sedimentary mounds that were shaped by microorganisms, explained first author, PhD student Matthew Dodd, UCL Earth Sciences and the London Centre for Nanotechnology. Published today in Nature and funded by UCL, NASA, Carnegie of Canada, and the UK Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the study describes the discovery and the detailed analysis of the remains undertaken by the team from UCL, the Geological Survey of Norway, US Geological Survey, the University of Western Australia, the University of Ottawa and the University of Leeds. Prior to this discovery, the oldest microfossils reported were found in Western Australia and dated at 3,460 million years old but some scientists think they might be non-biological artifacts in the rocks. It was therefore a priority for the UCL-led team to determine whether the remains from Canada had biological origins. The researchers systematically looked at the ways the tubes and filaments, made of hematite, a form of iron oxide or rust, could have been made through non-biological methods such as temperature and pressure changes in the rock during burial of the sediments, but found all of the possibilities unlikely. The hematite structures have the same characteristic branching of iron oxidizing bacteria found near other hydrothermal vents today and were found alongside graphite. And minerals like apatite and carbonate which are found in biological matter including bones and teeth and are frequently associated with fossils. They also found that the mineralized fossils are associated with spheroidal structures that usually contain fossils in younger rocks, suggesting that the hematite most likely formed when bacteria that oxidized iron for energy were fossilized in the rock. We found the filaments and tubes inside centimeter-sized structures called concretions or nodules, as well as other tiny spheroidal structures, called rosettes and granules, all of which we think are the products of putrefaction. They are mineralogically identical to those in younger rocks from Norway, the Great Lakes area of North America, and Western Australia, explained study lead, Dr. Dominic Papineau, UCL Earth Sciences and the London Centre for Nanotechnology. The structures are composed of the minerals expected to form from putrefaction and have been well documented throughout the geological record, from the beginning until today. The fact we unearthed them from one of the oldest known rock formations, suggests we've found direct evidence of one of Earth's oldest life forms. This discovery helps us piece together the history of our planet and the remarkable life on it, and will help to identify traces of life elsewhere in the universe. Matthew Dodd concluded, these discoveries demonstrate life developed on Earth at a time when Mars and Earth had liquid water at their surfaces, posing exciting questions for extraterrestrial life. Therefore, we expect to find evidence for past life on Mars 4,000 million years ago, or if not, Earth may have been a special exception.